Hello, welcome to Conversations at uh, wholenote.com, early May 2012. I'm here with Stuart Goodyear, pianist, composer. Stuart, thank you for coming in. My it's pleasure. Been, it's been, uh, what were we saying, fall 2010 was the last time. That's right, time that was the last time we that I appeared here, yeah. yeah. You just finished, and, and you're, back, you're back here briefly on a flying visit, and then you're back in again in deadly earnest uh, beginning of June. That's for, right. For uh, Beethoven cycle with a difference at Kerner Hall, but we'll, we'll come back to that. The last, time, the last time you were here, you just finished doing uh, uh, what I wrote down in my notes as 32 at 32. That was when you did the whole cycle at the Ottawa Festival. Ottawa Chamber right? Music Festival, yeah. yeah. And um, that you you did you did that over an extended period of a more extended period of time. More extended right? period, comparatively, um, it was um, in a span of five days. Five days one. back to back, or with um, breaks. Or, or? So each day was a little different. It was divided into nine parts, yeah. and um, each part would be. Um, from half an hour to three hours. Right. And it was in chronological order again, okay. so. Uh, chronological, and so over, oh, so nine parts. Nine parts. And this time at Kerner, it's three parts. It's three parts. So 10 and a half hours elapsed time, but playing time. Playing time is around, um, yeah, it's around ten and a half hours with um, wow. with um, two meal breaks. Two meal breaks, and and you say chronological chronological order. So, but and the parts are what they start long. I noticed the first one starts at 10, 10, 10 in the morning, and it's a four hour. That's right. And is that with a like with a break in the middle for? Yeah, there'll be a break People in the, to hit the middle. the bar in the <laughs> <laughs> What time will they open the bar for an all-day marathon? I'm thinking that um, they, they will just want to um, get a glass of water. I don't think there's going to be any beer or any gin in the house because um, I think they'll just want to quench the fire that will be going on in, at Kerner Hall. It's yeah. going to be uh, full of a lot of emotions, a lot of intensity, a lot mm -hmm. of rage, a lot of happiness, a lot of love, a lot of courtship. And uh, in the span of those four hours, um, they're going to be um, on a roller coaster ride mm -hmm. from 1790, well, early 1790. So I start right. with the, um, the two uh, slash son uh, sonatas slash sonatinas, the Opus 49 sonatas Casper's that he wrote. Ghosts. That's uh, right. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And um, we st um, I start with um, those two, and then after that, it will be from Opus 2 to right. Opus 111. So those are actually, what, 19 and 20? 19, 20, yeah. 19 and right. 20, but they were, they were ones that his brother hauled out at a period where that's he right. was going through a bit, of a, a bit of a slump, and I guess it was, you know, you've got to publish. You, got you to have publish. to publish something, yeah, you know, right. let's, let's keep the ball rolling. So you'll start with those start and with then those move and then, to the others. Absolutely. And, and then that goes up to the pathétique or their... We'll actually the, go um, um, a little beyond the pathétique. We'll be three sonatas after the pathétique. So okay. um, we end right at 1800. Oh, okay. So the classical sonatas and um, the sonata form proper are okay. um, what's going on in these... Um, uh, first 13 um, sonatas. Okay. And then part two will be the beginning of um, Beethoven's launch to um, something very different, almost experimental with the Funeral March sonata and then the yeah. Fantasy Sonatas with the Moonlight, the Tempest, the Wolstein, the Appassionata, all of that will be part right. of... Um, so it'll two. finish with the Appassionata? It will, it will finish with a uh, real, real bang oh, with the, with the Appassionata. Right. So when you did it in Ottawa, you wanted to do it in a tighter time frame even back then, right? I wanted to do it in one day, and there was some question of whether the audience would, go would with it. Uh, survive. <laughs> right. So, um, in the summer, we, I we, mean, we, yeah. we, we had a little gentle um, foreplay mm -hmm. um, in, in retrospect. And um, we, uh, 
It was a span of five days. And what was so wonderful about that cycle in Ottawa mm -hmm. was that every audience member kept on coming back. Oh, that's fantastic. So you actually had that sense of... They're, they wanted to be on that journey. Uh, we were all being right. transported. And chron it chronological is really the only way for this particular journey. I mean, it's interesting, the comparison in Beethoven's work for me would be when, when you have a, qu a quartet doing the entire cycle. And the, the differences of of approach to that. Some people will go chronologically through the whole thing. I, I remember one time in the 70s when the Amadeus carefully selected something early, something middle, something late, so that in every concert of the cycle, you actually had sonatas that had a resonance, uh, string quartets that had a resonance with each other and, and that was a different kind of journey, but, but here there's another story to tell, right? Um, this has always been a personal project for me. When I first heard these sonatas, I was around, around three or four. Mm -hmm. I had my first um, box set, and it was Ashkenazi performing. And as soon as I bought that set, I put on the first record, then the second, then the third. There were 13 LPs in all, and I think I listen to all 13 in, in that one, in, in that in one day in sequence. Other than the 19 I just, and 20, which were out of order. That's no right. That was, out, <laughs> out, that, was, that was out of order. Yeah. It was not reading yeah. program notes then. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just couldn't get enough. It was just, I craved more. Wow. I wanted to finish the journey on that one day. I didn't want to um, leave it unfinished. Otherwise, I wouldn't sleep. So then when you went to Curtis, at 15, right? Yeah. Fleischer was your teacher there? Yes, Leon Fleischer was Fleischer my main was teacher. And I read that you, in your first year there, so you did 32 at 16, right? You, That's right. You learned we what, through, one a week? Uh, one a week. So um, how the project that year worked was that I learned a sonata per week, yeah. had to be memorized, had to be at performance level, and um, uh, presented to Mr. Fleischer. And um, those um, lessons were so exhilarating and inspiring, needless to say. He did uh, take it easy on me when it came to the hammerclavier. He gave me two weeks. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Reading week plus one. That's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but not in chronological order when you did No, them not with in chronological him. order. It was um, the first sonata that we started with was Opus 109, just right after the hammerclavier. Right. And then it was just a real jumble, just going back and forth, which was, uh, yeah. Interesting, different, different venture. Yeah, absolutely. So with, so with, with this undertaking, there's, there's four hours for the first, and then there's a, what, a two-hour break, meal break? Or? I, get, um, I, have to, I have to check the schedule again. So I think it's, it's right it's, in it's front around, of me here. Oh, wait a minute, here Why we don't go. we just look at it? Yeah. So 10 till 2. So there's a one hour lunch uh, break. And then an break. hour, 3 till 6.30. Yeah. Up to the Appassionata and then... Two, uh, two hour dinner break. And then 8.30 to 11.30 from, from the Opus 24 and all the way... Number 24. Oh, uh, uh, so sonata o number 24. Opus yeah. 78. All the way through to the 111. That's right. right. Which is one of the two that you've recorded. Um, so the last five were the first volume, was the first volume of the Beethoven sonatas that I did. Okay. And that was released um, fall of 2010. Yeah, just be in fact, just before you were here That's right. for an interview last, yeah. with Marquee Records, yes. right? Yeah. So and I you've have, done another volume since then? Or? Yes, the um, second volume, um, the middle sonatas, just came out um, March 14th. Okay. So that's available. So that has the Moonlight, the Pastoral. So it's from Opus 27, the... Um, the first fantasy sonata right. of the Opus 27 set, mm -hmm. and, the, and the second sonata is the uh, Moonlight of that set. Then there's the Pastoral, there's the Tempest on the second CD um, included, and the, um, the Hunt, okay. I guess. Um, I guess it's a nickname, yep. popular nickname for that. So that's, um, that's that volume for the middle okay. sonatas. And then there will be a um, special release of the whole box set all 32 sonatas, and that will be available um, um, during the week of the Luminato event. 
So they're all they're all wrapped all be at there. this point. Where, They'll where be did, there. You, did you record them all in one place or all at the Glen Gould studio? Oh wow. So um, I think initially there was going to be a third volume, but then after that, um, when um, the uh, Beethoven Marathon was confirmed mm -hmm. for Illuminato, um, uh, Mark and I just decided we were going go to we were going to go for the whole thing. So you so the whole thirty two will be available at. Get a, get us a review copy ahead so oh, yeah, that we absolutely. can do something for June That'd before be the before the event. Gladly. I didn't realize the project was was complete. So the recording was all completed. In that, are there any that you look back already and say, "I do that different now"? Or well, what was does interesting? it change you every time you do the the cycle like this? Every time it's um, well, I have a concept. I have a concept, I have an idea of um, each sonata, but every experience is very different. It's always organic. Mm -hmm. It's um, sometimes a phrase may be more um, expressive or more extended depending on, um, on, the, um, on the moment, on the environment, uh, the audience. Everything really mm -hmm. plays a part to a performance for me. So it's, um, it's never the same ball game. Same mm -hmm. pieces, different ball game. The Moonlight Sonata is every bit as intense as it is on the recording, but every time it's different. And there are some people who said, you actually did that differently from the recording. Hmm. Well, it good. happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, you hope it happens. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I, wasn't at the, uh, I wasn't at the launch, uh, the, at the RCM season launch, where you, uh, this couple of weeks back. I, I didn't make it, but you played something there. What did you... That was the last you? movement of the moonlight that I oh, did. Oh, okay. And people were telling me that was the, one of the most intense um, season launches ever because um, it really ended with a very, very scary, stormy finale. Uh -huh. I was the last one to perform at that launch. And right. uh, I think um, the audience was a little taken aback. I think it, it took, you know, five seconds for um, a lot of people to, um, to clap. They were, um, well, silence, I think they were struck by a bolt of lightning, which, um, silence which speaks, is awesome. You know, yeah, silence so, uh, speaks louder than applause sometimes. It was, it was quite powerful. Yeah. I heard, I heard uh, that uh, some people uh, were actually a little bit startled by, just in that third movement, by the, uh, by the, by the tempi. Not necessarily that it was faster than they were expecting, but that some people were saying, well, I haven't heard it quite like that. And I, I think that's maybe something that you're known for. That I know, you, I know in the last interview you did with us, you talked about how in many cases, um, if I remember right, in many cases the, the tempi that you will choose are actually truer to Beethoven's than some people would dare at the moment. I mean, I think of something like the like the Opus 110, where you get people slowing down at the beginning in order to be able to speed up, because if you take it at the right tempo right from the get-go, unless you've got the chops, you're really going to be in trouble. What do you think of that? Uh, well, Beethoven was all about never taking the safe way out. I think there was always danger to what he created and first audience has actually thought that Beethoven was a little insane. They thought that um, his pieces, like the, or like the early pieces we were talking before the pathetique, that these pieces were too wild for his own good. The, harm, the harmonies were very revolutionary and it really hit people. Some people were actually assaulted mm -hmm. um, uh, psychologically from what Beethoven was doing. Imagine um, hearing these sonatas in a living room space. You know, it's mm -hmm. a lot where people are really, um, they, they've heard Mozart, and not to say that Mozart is nice. There's a mm -hmm. lot of very uh, story mo moments in Mozart, but everything, uh, all expression is comparatively held in check. And then you have Beethoven, who just kicks those uh, uh, doors of reserve mm -hmm. down. And yeah, they were, they were, in, they were in for the um, shock of their life. Mm. And the fact that these, sonatas were written a while ago, I don't think should, uh, no one should lose that impact. And dynamics, expression, all of those um, directions 
are there in the score. Mm -hmm. uh, very quiet moments, and then suddenly there's a startling um, kick to the gut. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people should be scared of that. I think they have shied away from that because they thought that um, it would be less poetic, maybe uh, uh, not, nothing tamed or um, not correct, which I never agreed with when it came to interpreting um, any composer. I don't think there is a correct way. I think there should be a right way according to the interpreter. Yeah, the interpreter one mm -hmm. has to be convinced in what he or she is doing. You got to have a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to concept. have a personal story, a personal concept, and the um, mm -hmm. pieces have to breathe within you. Right. You know, like you swallow it in a capsule, and then you know you just can't help but be um, transformed and possessed by what you're playing. Mm -hmm. You could do your homework. You could see the history. You could check out the text and everything, but. Anger has to be inside of you. Love has to be inside of you. All of these emotions have to be understood, mm -hmm. um, to my mind, in order to... There's no reiteration going on there. It's, yeah. er, everything is fresh. So is there that's, a, how, that's how I approach these yeah. sonatas. So uh, going back to what you were saying, you talked about the first set is going to end with 1800 and then kick in with 1801. So I, I kind of... I won't say an intellectual, but... An, but a, but a break that is not really such a break in 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 it's, it wasn't one of these periods of 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 silence in beethoven's life mm -hmm. in a form where you wonder if he's ever going to write another one of where he must have wondered if he was ever going to write another piece in this form whereas between the second and the third um after the appassionata there was this great big silence in terms of the sonata form before he got back to it. Before he got back to it. I think it took him like um, four years or something um, before he wrote up a 78. Uh, it was a four-year um, distance yeah. between the Apostolate and the um, Obus 78. And then um, another so break. What was going on? what was going on for you there in, in, in terms of the way you see that? Do you feel that change? I mean, when you leave at the end of the second and you come back for the third, you're inhabiting a different person. Almost deaf. Yeah. We're talking, the Appassionata is probably one of the most uncontrolled, it's, I think, one of the most human sonatas that um, Beethoven wrote in a sense that imagine holding anger holding rage for such a long period of time, no opportunity to communicate, no opportunity to express it. So suddenly, you're, you hold it for so long that you just suddenly break and you erupt like a volcano. I think mm. that's the Apassionata. There happens. are so many moments in which you hold it and you hold it and your body starts to quiver with those um, trills. That's how, I, um, that's how I play those trills at the beginning. There's nothing... It's not an ordinary trill. It's really um, trying very hard to um, keep the shakes from happening, and then suddenly you just cry out. Mm -hmm. You bang the walls. You kick, you know, you kick the doors open. You do whatever you have to do. You use profanity, whatever you have to do, and then suddenly there's this quivering moment at the end when you, um, when the subject finally calms down, and that movement is just full of pain, full of suffering, full of anger, full of um, you know uh, emotions that one feels when someone has done wrong by them. Mm -hmm. The second movement is a coming towards maybe thinking about what happened beforehand, trying very hard to um, be tranquil, trying to find an inner peace. And then the third movement, to me, is like a fight for the individual. It's like a fight saying, you won't get me down. Mm -hmm. I am defiant. It's a, it's a different kind of anger. It's a fight, but to me, it's a, a little optimistic more so, and it, it still ends in F minor, and you can tell the subject is very angry, but it's almost very, very cathartic. Mm -hmm. And it's a perfect place to end, because the audience collects themselves, mm -hmm. and then the beginning of the Opus 78 is very warm, very loving. Thing, a, thing, a, thing, a, a things, things, things have come down, yeah. and um, I think the audience will feel that Beethoven is in a better place, or the... Um, the individual is in a better, better place, whatever the character is. 
It just, just reminds me, I must, we, must, we mustn't forget to talk about the fact that uh, um, you're going to be working with uh, Melati Surya Dharma, who is a, a performance artist, a dancer. Yeah. So this is, so this is not going to be just... So how's that going to work in terms of the... She, I mean, I, there was a vogue a while back where, where people would come and you know, paint a picture while the concert's going on. And I assume it's not quite like that, but the two of you have been working together to, to create what for this? Well, this is a real um, collaboration. Malati has listened to the sonatas, and what she's going to bring to it is um, something very personal, as well as what I do in, interpretively uh, with my interpretation of the sonatas. Her performance work is going to be very, very still, almost motionless. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm, I'm, I could tell you more about what's going to happen, but it's um, a very no, unique I'm, collaboration for yeah. me. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be absolutely thrilling. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I, won't, I won't ask much more than that then. Uh, you're, you're going, you told me earlier that you're going to be going to work with her for a few days. We'll be in, I'll be in Connecticut from the 10th to the 15th of May. And uh, yeah, we does, and we're going to be going back, through yeah. and um, have a little preview of what we're going to be doing June 9th in okay. Toronto at the Watermill Center okay. um, in Connecticut. Um, I'm really looking, looking forward to those days coming up. Okay. So that's, that's going to be interesting. So then... So then moving on from this, because this is, this is going to be a monumental piece. I mean, I, you know, in the same way as one can go to the ring cycle, you know, once every month or so, but, but if, when you experience it all within that intense time frame, it really is transformative as an audience member to go through these journeys, and I'm really looking forward to this one. But I wanted to ask you, I mean, obviously... At some level, you've put, you've put a lot of your life into Beethoven in this part of your performing life. Is there another, any other composer where you sense that there's a similar kind of overarching journey, story waiting to be discovered or anyone else? I know you, last time you were here, you were talking about Messiaen. And I, I don't know, is there, is there any, any, anything else that's after this for you? I'll keep you posted. You'll keep me posted? Absolutely. Uh -huh. You're yeah. not going to jinx yourself on it, are you? Well, not jinxing, but yeah. um, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too soon. Okay. But um, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to, um, for, for the next adventure. We'll have you back for the next adventure. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. that. And thank you, too. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.